Minecraft optimization. Something that's both simple and yet complex. Well, today I will give you everything you need to know about optimization and even optimizing how the game is launched. So you can stop blaming lag on your internet and actually get good. Yeah, this will be fun. So keep your socks on and enjoy the video. Before we install any mods, first we will need to install pre-mods, essentially mods that make other mods work. The first one is Fabric API. Without it, your mods won't even load. Next is Cloth Config API. This one lets you customize certain mods. After that is Mod Menu, along with Text Placeholder API. Mod Menu adds a clean interface to Minecraft menu so you can see which mods are installed, and you can manage them pretty easily. Now, technically Mod Menu and text placeholder aren't required, but I highly recommend them. It's nice to know what's running in the background instead of guessing. All of these mods will be linked in the description below, and later in the video, I'll show you the easiest way to download them. Now, the best optimization mod in most cases is a mod called Sodium. It's the most popular optimization mod outside of Optifine. Most of you might have heard of it. So, what does Sodium actually do? Well, Sodium completely rewrites Minecraft's rendering engine. Basically, Minecraft normally spends way too much effort doing whatever it's doing. Think of it like writing a 10-page essay just to say the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Impressive, but completely unnecessary. Another big point is compatibility. Unlike older mods that tried to handle rendering and broke when combined with other mods, Sodium is designed to work with other mods. That means you can still run most mods with Sodium. Now, Sodium alone will increase your FPS by a lot, but we can go further. We can add a lot more optimization mods. First one we will be adding is Sodium Extra, which just adds more options to Sodium. There are extra settings for things like animations, particles, and details. Basically, it makes Sodium more customizable. The next mod is Entity Culling. Minecraft normally tries to render every mob and block entity, even the ones you can't actually see, even if they're behind walls or underground. That's just straight up wasting performance. But this mod fixes that by only rendering what's visible to you. If something's hidden, the game just skips it. I also added more Culling, which just does the exact same thing, but is even more efficient in Culling. And you can also customize it. This next mod is very technical but I'll do my best to explain it. It's Frightcore. Frightcore is a mod that works behind the scenes to cut down Minecraft's memory usage, especially in big mod packs. Instead of boosting FPS directly, it focuses on cleaning up the way Minecraft stores data. For example, the game often keeps around a ton of duplicate information, like block states, models, and shapes, even when they're exactly the same. Frightcore steps in and makes the game smarter by reusing data instead of making new copies every time. It also trims down waste, and things like chunk loading, models, and even the tiny building blocks of graphics, which are called quads. All of this adds up to hundreds of megabytes, even gigabytes of RAM saved. This mod is great if you plan on using hundreds of mods at a time. Lithium is a general optimization mod. It works on both the client and the server. What Lithium does is improve the way Minecraft handles things like mob AI, block updates, and world ticking. On servers, this means smoother gameplay and the ability to handle more players. In single player, it helps free up your CPU, which can lead to a better frame rate, since Lithium doesn't alter vanilla mechanics at all. Another great mod is Immediately Fast. This one focuses on making Minecraft's rendering way more efficient, especially in places where the game normally struggles, like when there are a ton of entities or signs on screens. Instead of sending a bunch of tiny draw calls to your graphics card, it bundles them together in a smarter way, which massively cuts down on lag. Dynamic FPS, a useful mod if you like to multitask, which would be me, because I like clicking cookies. Anyways, what it does is cut down Minecraft's resource usage whatever the game isn't focused on, like if you tab out or go AFK. It's especially useful on laptops since it can show your battery status in game and warn you if it's low. Plus, it fixes a vanilla bug where Minecraft wastes CPU power in the background, which helps a ton on low-end systems. Krypton is a server-side mod that makes Minecraft networking faster and more efficient. It reduces CPU and memory use, and it just makes servers run smoother, especially with lots of players online. It's still a work in progress, but it works well
well alongside mods like lithium and sodium. C2ME, short for Concurrent Trunk Management Engine, speeds up trunk generation by actually using multiple CPU cores at once. Vanilla Minecraft mostly runs trunks on a single thread, which is straight up just wasting performance. I don't know why it does this. But C2ME spreads the workout for much better results. It doesn't change world generation itself, but it should load chunks a lot faster. Noisium is another world gen optimization mod. It's similar to C2ME, where it makes chunk generation faster, but it optimizes parts of world generation that other mods usually skip, like biome placement for example. Bad optimization is a collection of tiny tweaks that when stacked together, give Minecraft a nice performance boost. It cuts out a lot of the little wasteful stuff the game does every tick. It skips unnecessary light map updates, so your GPU isn't constantly recalculating brightness when nothing's changed. It also makes sky color calculations way more efficient by caching them instead of running the full process every single frame. And it even disables unused debug logic, so the game isn't wasting resources on features you're not using. Those are pretty much all of the optimization mods that you will really need. You can also add package fixer and very many players for more optimizations, but those aren't completely necessary. Now I will clearly go over the quality of life mods. Iris lets you run shaders alongside sodium. Model gap fix fixes texture gaps on textures such as swords and blocks. Fast quit just makes quitting faster. Remove reloading screen, which just straight up removes Mojang loading screen whenever you apply a texture pack. But you will need Forge config API port in order for this to work. Continuity, which adds connected textures. For example, glass panes are now connected. And finally, Zoomify, which gives you that Optifine style zoom. Feel free to add as many mods as you want. Before I move on to other mods and ways you can boost your FPS, I just want to touch on mod packs. Mod packs are just a bunch of mods in one pack. The one I recommend is fabulously optimized. It has a bunch of the mods I previously mentioned and more. I will leave a link in the description for more information. Now, another mod you can use is Vulcan. Vulcan is similar to Sodium in that it completely changes the API, but this time it completely replaces it. I've already made a full video breaking down Vulcan in detail, so definitely check that out after this one, but Vulcan is superior to Sodium, it has insane gains in FPS. In some cases, I'm getting around 500 FPS more than I do on Sodium, and sometimes it's a thousand. The problem with Vulcan is that it may not be compatible with every system. If you are on an outdated system, you might not be able to use Vulcan. Vulcan is also not compatible with the majority of mods, since it completely changes the game's rendering system. I would only use Vulcan if you want just the best performance possible, and don't really care about installing other mods. Now, if you play on older versions of Minecraft, the most notorious one being 1.8, the only option you have is Optifine. Optifine is basically an all-in-one mod and increases performance while adding quality of life features. It's definitely not as good as the other mods like Sodium or Vulcan, but it still gives a decent boost in FPS and makes the game run smoother. On top of that, it adds full support for HD textures and custom resource packs. Optifine is also the mod that made shaders possible. Beyond performance, it gives you a huge amount of control over how the game looks and feels. You can tweak clouds, water, trees, rain, snow, sky, and stars. You can literally tweak it all if you wanted to. It also extends render distance. On the technical side, Optifine gives you access to things like V-Sync, Mitmaps, Anti-Aliasing for improved visuals. Depending on your setup, it even includes quality of life features like fast texture pack switching, custom full screen resolution, auto save controls, and more. Yeah, it just has tons of features, although not the best best performance mod, it's one of the only other options you have for older versions of Minecraft. Let's move on to custom clients. Now, you may ask, what is a custom client? Well, a custom client is a modified version of the official Minecraft client that comes with built-in features. Instead of starting with plain vanilla Minecraft and installing everything yourself, custom clients are preloaded with mods in order to boost performance. For example, Lunar Client is by far one of the most popular custom clients. It has features like keystroke displays, FPS counters, and even motion blur, while Badline Client includes similar 
similar tools along with its own anti-cheat system for competitive servers. Some clients like Feather Client even let you add your own mods on top of the pre-installed ones. And I'm pretty sure Lunar Client does this as well, just not with every version. Compared to mod packs, when you run through Fabric or Forge, custom clients are more of a plug and play experience. You just install the client and everything just works right away. The trade-off is that they're usually less customizable. The three clients I recommend are Bad Lion, Feather, and Lunar Client. I personally like to use Lunar Client myself, but Bad Lion and Feather Client are both great choices. All three of these clients give a noticeable bump in FPS and just overall smoothness. Like Lunar Client feels as smooth as my cheese. Staying on the topic of custom clients, there are also custom launchers. Believe it or not, custom launchers are 10 times better than Minecraft's regular launcher. Custom launchers like Prism Launcher, MultiMC, and AT Launcher are alternative ways to start Minecraft that give you more control compared to the default Minecraft launcher, because that thing sucks. Anyways, instead of just pressing play, these launchers make it easy to manage multiple game instances. And also, you can play any versions on any of these launchers. You can even play the alpha versions if you wanted to. The the big advantage of these launchers is convenience. They save time and keep your mods organized, which is actually how I make most of my videos. I use custom launchers to speed up the process of downloading mods. The launcher I personally use is AT Launcher, and I will personally show you guys how to install most of the mods mentioned in this video. Hey, hello. The first step to download AT Launcher is type in Minecraft AT Launcher. Then once you get to this website, you will click download on one of the operating systems. If you're on Windows, I recommend doing the recommend setup but if you're on like Linux or some other uh, operating system then just download one of these but since most people are on Windows you would just click recommended setup and then just follow the instructions here of course I'm gonna download it today because I already have it installed so I don't want to reinstall everything I have once you follow all the steps and logged into your Microsoft account you should be should be on the app these are all my game instances so I have game instances in 1.16.5 1.20.1 1.21.5 and if you guys are confused on what it's Instances, instances are pretty much just versions of Minecraft. You might be wondering, how do I create an instance? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to create a pack and then choose whatever versions you want. The thing I like about AT Launcher is you can play the betas, alphas, you can like toggle all these. So if you want to play like an alpha version of Minecraft, you can actually just play that in this launcher, which is actually pretty cool. Go 1.21.5, go fabric. You can do forge as well, but this video is for fabric. You can rename it for whatever you want. I'll name mine subscribe. There we go. Go. Now you click create instance and there we go. It should be in your instance section right here. And the way you add mods is clicking add mods, obviously. And well, since we're using Fabric, we'll want to install the Fabric API. And then now you can add as many mods as you want. So there's Sodium, there's Cloth Config, which you'll need. There's Iris Shaders, there's Entity Calling. So yeah, just go around, just install all these mods that I mentioned in this video. Another thing I like about this, you can sort by category. So you can literally, so if you wanted to play like economy mods, you can, or equipment mods, or whatever but for this video it is optimization so you can click optimization category and just download all these you can literally just do this this is why i love at launcher it's so nice just be careful though some, some certain mods won't work with other mods you just gotta be careful with that all right now that once you got that you can just simply play it and we're here yeah let's lo let's launch a single player world but something that i want to quickly touch on is settings if you don't know the more chunks you load the laggier your game will be because well your cpu and GPU as well is working even hard to load all those chunks. I would just recommend for most computers, just leave it at 16. You maybe try 20, see how your luck is. Maybe try 24 if you have like a really good computer. Most people like 20 is enough. Like I typically keep mine around 20. And I uh, like to turn VSync off because I just hate VSync. I just prefer it to be off. Well, yeah, that's pretty much AT Launcher. Now, that's all for this video. Hopefully now your computer can actually run Minecraft. And if it's still somehow lagging, I feel so bad for you, man. I'm so sorry. Give me a kiss. But maybe it's time to get a new computer. Feel free to comment down below if I missed anything or there are mods I didn't mention because I somehow always forget something. That's just my trait. Also, subscribe!